Islamophobia is racism. It's hostility and prejudice towards people who are Muslim and also people who are perceived to be Muslim. So it is deep rooted. It is not a new form of racism. It's been around for hundreds and hundreds of years. It's manifesting in ways that perhaps people have not seen for a long time, uh, but it's very real. And I think it's one of the few forms of racism that people still debate if it really is true and if it really is real and if it is racism. And the short answer to that is when people who are Muslim people say that they are facing racism and bigotry and prejudice, we just we should believe them. And we should not debate if this is real or not, because all the evidence shows it is real. If we look at the world, it's very chaotic right now. And if we look at the big issues of our time, so for example, immigration is an issue that keeps coming up here. In this country, in the UK, we have a crisis about, called Brexit, as everyone's heard. And one of the driving factors behind that is immigration. But if you look at um, the way uh, the discourse around immigration is framed, it's deeply racist, it's very Islamophobic, and when I say these things, I have evidence behind them. So if you look at academic studies, you look at this whole, uh, the way uh, Europe allegedly has a refugee crisis. It's called Europe's refugee crisis. The refugee crisis is not Europe's crisis. It's first of all, it's a human rights crisis. Secondly, the vast majorities of, majority of the world's refugees are in the country next door from where they fled. So for example, Pakistan, which is where my family are from, uh, has some of the biggest number of refugees, Afghan refugees are in Pakistan. You look at South Sudan, you look at Ethiopia, you look at the crisis in Syria, those refugees are in Lebanon, they're in Jordan, they're in Iraq, they're in countries surrounding where the crisis is. This is not about Europe and it's not about Europe's refugee crisis. The way the media discourse is framed politically is about large numbers, swarms, words like swarms have been used by British politicians, by our former Prime Minister for example. It's deeply racist and a a lot of it is uh, the fear of brown-skinned Muslims coming in large numbers to a white Christian country. That is a form of Islamophobia. And that is just one example of how um, this discourse manifests. And then there are other examples. So terrorism, for example. Terrorism is a universal issue that's been around since the world's been turning. But when you bring in all the um, language and the imagery around Muslims and beards and veils, then what happens is very easy then to bring in the securitization agenda because it makes it, it's much easier to demonize large numbers of people. So in Europe in particular, what we have is we have an increase in uh, targeted racist attacks, particularly against women who happen to be Muslim, who wear the head scarf like the one I'm wearing, other women who choose to wear a face covering called a niqab. We know that in countries like France, in Switzerland, in Germany, in Hungary, in, in across Europe there is a debate about Muslim women, but the debate is not with Muslim women. It's a discussion that is being had about women without them being present in that discussion. And again it's very problematic and it's very racist. And this is a form of Islamophobia as well. Well, the first thing we need to really um, acknowledge is who makes up journalists across the world. Usually there are people from elite backgrounds. So, for example, in the UK, the vast majority of journalists are privately educated. They have come from elite backgrounds. Uh, so from the very start of their education process, they are not surrounded by people who look like the rest of society. And the information they gain and the experiences they have of living with people is very narrow. And then you transport them into the environment, which is a newsroom. And 99% of the newsroom is very homogenous, it's very white, it's male, it's coming from a certain class perspective. So there lies the issue. If you have a homogenized group of people who are presenting um, a narrative about everybody else, when those people are not present, when their viewpoints, when their lived realities are not present in terms of you know, producing the news, that's how these issues occur.